Hi, Carl. We're so excited to be here. Thanks for having us here at the River Lodge. Let's talk about your properties. You've got two right here within 10 minutes distance. That's great. Um, How's it been going since COVID? Actually, phenomenally well. Um, uh, you know, COVID was a, a very testing time for all of us in our industry. But uh, since then, uh, we've really picked up business. It's, it's been a phenomenal year this year so far. Forecasts are looking great. Yeah. Um, and uh, a little bit of just after COVID was also fantastic. So it's good seeing people back in the bush. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what do you think is leading to the, your success? I mean, this place is packed. We've seen lots of people here. And with only 20 rooms packed means <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a lot of people. No, it's a yeah. lot of people. No, we, I, think, I think the secret to our success is that we, we're very passionate about what we do. We're very okay. passionate not only about conservation and looking after our planet, but very passionate about people. And I think giving people experiences that they don't really know that they, they need is what we thrive on. Um, it's creating those surprises, it's creating the bespoke uh, safaris, and really getting to people's souls. So they can, you know, when they do go out into this bush, it's not about ticking off the list, it's about really having an immersive experience um, and walking away here with a life-changing experience. Very important to us as staff. I've got quite a large complement. I've got 120 staff for, for 40 or rooms. 40 people. So, so, right, so is it 40 rooms total? Uh, sorry, 40. Uh, 40 people. 40 people. <laughs> yes. So it's 20 rooms total. And is it 20 here and then 20 at the other it's, lodge? Or I've got 10 rooms down here. Okay. It takes two, two guests each in each room. And I've got 11 at the top of Rock Lodge. Plus I've got Cliff, Cliff Lodge, which is an exclusive okay. use. So we've got quite a lot of staff. So it's, it works out to about three to four staff per, per guest that we and get that, here. And that's crazy. Yeah, so that allows us, exactly. And that allows us to be, yeah. be bespoke and allows us to come up with all these wonderful surprises and uh, yeah, create these wonderful magical experiences. Okay, so let's talk about the three different lodges and how they're different then. Okay, let's talk about the one that we're at. Mm -hmm. Give us a full name of that mm -hmm. and kind of who is the best demographic for this? Yeah, look, Safari Lodge um, Safari Lodge is obviously right down in the bush. You can, you're really immersed in the bush. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, I don't know if you, you might be able to see in the back of the camera, but there's always something going on behind us, be it giraffe, elephants, whatever it may yeah. be. So you really And we've had a full show. All day today. long. Yeah, yeah, it all happens. Uh, so that's that's a real good thing about the, the bottom here. I would I would actually suggest my start, my get to our guests that they, they go to both. Uh, Rock Lodge is up on a on a little kopi, what we call a kopi in South Africa, it's a little hill. Okay. Um, it's quite quite high off the ground, so your view of the of the Sabi Sands and the surrounding areas is is uh, unmatched. There is no other uh, another lodge right. up on a on a hill like that. So the views are spectacular. Um, so the, yeah, I think from from both sides here we don't take children purely because we don't want kids running around the bush. You might so what's the, what's the youngest age that you take at this? We from twelve property. years and up. So twelve and up. Yeah. So you can still bring teenagers here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and I would. Uh, really recommend it as, as yeah. coming as a family uh, and we're seeing a lot more of that since COVID a lot of a lot of generational travel yeah. and uh, it makes my heart really happy because when I see generational uh, travel happening all of a sudden families are starting to talk yeah they're starting to uh, be immersed in this experience and experience it together so they get as excited from from the older people all the way right. to the youngsters it might be their mm -hmm. first you know, nature or wildlife experience. And they connect in a way that they've never connected before. And I've seen it, I've seen the tears, I've seen the emotions, um, and it is just a magical place. Uh, you know, Safari Lodge, like I say, is is more, it's, it's I suppose, a bit more well, laid let's back. Let's talk about this one for just a minute before we move on, because mm -hmm. you guys, just especially for the family market, you've got, and for adults as well, you've got tree houses, places to walk to. Absolutely. So you can wander a little bit freely here, even though there's animals just really right across yeah, this riverbed. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that because mm -hmm. we built tree house oh, probably about 10 or so years mm -hmm. ago, maybe a bit more. Um, and, and the point of it was exactly that, is that we do do walking safaris as well. Um, but obviously that's with a rifle, with a guide, with yeah. a tracker and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Um, and uh, But here, you know, you can have your lunch or your breakfast in the morning and you can just take a leisurely stroll down the walkways it's it's a canopy walk so you're right up high in the canopy you're high. it's mm -hmm. very safe and you can see all sorts of game below you as you're walking to the treehouse and when you get to the treehouse it's a big viewing deck we've got a little pub there right so you can have yourself a beer or a glass and of wine and we've seen hippos there yeah it's full of hippos there's 30 yeah. odd hippos mm -hmm. in there elephants always come down so yeah. it's just a it's a wonderful experience so really cool okay so let's move up to the other lodge now mm -hmm. 
so you take younger children there? Absolutely. I take okay. from day one all oh, the way seriously? up. Yeah, so we take yeah, babies. you have a baby and you want to come, come there? Come to so us. Do you feel like people don't want to stay at that lodge because they're like, oh my gosh, I don't want a crying baby in the wilderness? No, I, I think, um, no. I, okay. I, I think it's, it's uh, the, the rooms are far enough apart to be able to allow that. If we do have a family yeah. and they've got a baby, uh, we don't allow the babies on drive, obviously, for, 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 for obvious reasons. Uh, we don't want, uh, you know, children, especially youngsters, uh, can be quite um, unsettling for them. And, and it's a long yeah. period of time, three hours for a child to and be And so you can cater focused. that around and whatever we can, we the do, family is. You're uh, not going to take them out for five hours. And no, absolutely. And we can do kiddies drives. Yeah. We do, we've, got a, we've got what we call a Cubs club, so they can belong to our Cubs club. Okay. They get a little backpack and they get a whole lot of goodies in there. They do tracks with the Rangers. They yeah. do tracks with the, and, and do a whole lot of sure. educational, fun stuff. You know, that's what it's all about. We even get them in the kitchens. They, they bake cookies. They do a variety of things. There's a treasure hunt and we've got all sorts of things. We, we really immerse ourselves in it and try and do what I did with my children. Uh, my children grew up here um, from from birth all the way up to, yeah. to now they're teenagers. And we did the same thing. We'd go to the river, we'd play in the river, we'd you know, have all sorts of fun and, and we try and do the same with our guests. Let's talk about that for just a minute because I think that's an interesting point that you brought up, The your children grew up here. I mean, what do you feel like the intangible benefits are for children who actually yeah you're gonna to have to probably come. ask, ask me in another 10 years but <laughs> but so far it looks it's, it's phenomenal i mean my, my well just for somebody that comes on a safari because kids really are not wired for the outdoors anymore yeah, they're really I, wired for social media absolutely. video games those types of things absolutely sadly in our modern world uh, it's not only children no more even adults yeah. are starting to lose that connectivity yeah and when i say connectivity everybody i'm not meaning i'm not meaning wi-fi connectivity i'm meaning co connect yourself to this to, yeah. to nature connect and yourself I, to nature and to each other absolutely and, yeah. and all of a sudden it, mm -hmm. it does it, it does start that it's all up to you if you if you immerse yourself into this experience take away the tablets the phones and everything else and immerse yourself yeah. into the experience you as a family unit will will experience this together and it does right. create conversations not only while you're here but when you go back home sure you guys have got something to share which other people sure. don't have and uh, you can talk as much as you like but it, the, the the beauty of it is you've got to come here to feel that energy yeah. because it's an energy it's it's it truly is an energy you know we i, I know in in the modern worlds in, in first world countries you find that a lot of cities are built on cement and tar and everything else we don't even get our feet out of our shoes you know so to take your feet off take your shoes off yeah. be barefoot go and stand in the river for half an hour immerse yourself into this into this magical place yeah and speaking really about sharing I, I feel like I missed the prime moment of my life this morning because I didn't go on the drive I was yeah. feeling a little bit tired I went to bed super late and I was like okay we've got lots of drives I'm gonna miss this one and today was the all out, you know, yeah. King Lion. Yeah. It all happened. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, a, a kill. You had baby cubs there, everything. And yeah. my husband came back and he's like, I'm so sorry <laughs> that you miss that. And I really do feel like I miss like a pride yeah. moment that we could have had for the rest of our lives together yeah, I hear that you. you can never get back. No, and, I hear and you. so I see what you're saying. Like you really connect on different things Absolutely. And, and are creating memories. Absolutely. Okay, so up at that lodge, how many restaurants do you have? Same as here. I've got one lodge, one, mm -hmm. one restaurant, a lounge area. With the restaurant we all sure. we love doing communal dining mm -hmm. but we can do we do a lot of private dining as well we've got two wine cellars we do private uh, lovely bespoke uh, mm -hmm. dining as well romantic turndowns you name it yeah. it's up to the guests how they would like it we encourage people to sit together around a table mm -hmm. um, meet new people from yeah. around the world I feel like this bug doesn't <laughs> yeah. that's one thing you're going to in the wild yeah in yeah. the wild exactly <laughs> um, but I think uh, at the end of the day I think um, you know with, with uh, Rock Lodge and, and Safari Lodge you know it's just, just immersive immersive experience and, I, and, and that's what we really focus on we really try and create this experience that is is not just a, a, a holiday trip it's not just a holiday it's, it's okay a, so it's, if we've got somebody that's coming like on honeymoon or something do you do any private dining oh, any yeah. boma type and we've got lots of little secrets like and surprises so we do a lot of that we do romantic turn down okay. we don't like telling you too much about it too because, much. because as know. adults you know what happens is uh, I always say this you know as children I used to love it as a kid we used to get all these surprises yeah. around every corner and you know everybody used to make it all fun for you sure. then you become an adult and all that goes away. So we we really love doing surprises. Yeah. We, we love coming around a corner and giving you a surprise or, or creating a, you know, if somebody's on honeymoon, yeah. for example, or have their birthday. You know, we've got somebody today, for example, whose birthday it is who didn't tell us, naughty lady, uh, but we found out about it and we've made a beautiful cake for her and she'll get that tonight and we'll sing for her and we'll do okay. a little, uh, entertainment for her. But it's those little things, you know, it's it's like welcoming people back to a family. We are a family. Yeah. We, we are, and we've got 
A lot of repeat guests, a huge amount of our business, at least 30 to 40% of our business is repetitive business. So we've got friends that, and family that come back regularly yeah. all the time and we created these bonds with them um, purely because, you know, I think we care. We, we're passionate about what we do yeah. and we're passionate about people, as I said in the beginning. Um, and I feel like you can feel that from your staff. I mean, everybody's just... You, you can just feel like the heart Absolutely. just coming out Absolutely. in everything that they're doing from the massage therapist to uh, the waiter here to you stopping by every single table. It's really a personable. It is. It sh- and it should yeah. be. It should be because that's our home. We're welcoming you yeah. into our home. And that's why we don't we don't have as a graces. I don't have name tags. None of my staff have name tags. Um, and it's purely because of it. It takes away from from being yeah, in a it hotel. More, yeah. It's rather just you're coming home. You're coming to our family. Come back home. If you want to go behind the pub, get yourself a drink and do it. No problem if you want to go into our kitchen welcome to go in my kitchen so it's it's that sort of yeah that sort of relaxed environment but still five stars so it, sure. it's it's that little balance that you've got to try and get right and i think we do i think we've got a really good balance uh, we know we do a lot of work in the communities we it's, okay let's not go to that first let's go to the third property okay and then we'll come back to the cool. community yeah Tell me about the third one. So the third one is is a special one. Uh, this is Richard's Richard's home. Well, okay. Well, let's talk about this. Yeah. Who, who is if if you are brand new to this whole brand? Tell us who the owner of this yes. whole reserve is. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, this Ulusaba belongs to Richard Branson. He's okay. the uh, the owner, CEO, and chairman of uh, Virgin. Yeah. Um, and Virgin. Variety so this, of is, this is no small. No, that's a big, it's a big, <laughs> yeah. a, a big entity. And Does uh, Richard? Let's ask some hot questions. Does he ever stop by? Many times. Yes, he loves. So he, you could be staying here, and all of a sudden, Richard Branson's oh, here, having I, a drink I, with you at the bar. I've had, a, I've, I've got a numerous examples, but I'll give you one. We had, a, we had a wedding on the yeah. go. Uh, it was a uh, bit of an elope. People going away to sure. get married on their own, mm-hmm. and Richard happened to be here, and he gave the bride away. Um, so he joined the wedding, and he said, oh, sure. "Here I am. I'll join the wedding." And, he, and it, it just made that you can imagine. He what seems it so friendly. I mean, is he that personable all no, he's the magi- time? He's magic. He's, he's, uh, I've been with this company for 24 years. Okay. Um, and I don't, I've never worked for a company like this. Again, we're working, uh, the way we run yeah. this lodge is how Virgin runs. It's very yeah. similar. We've practiced the same ethos and the same. We yeah, and I've heard, I've heard that ethos across the cruise lines yeah, everywhere. Absolutely. So uh, we try and really company, push that hard. That you know? He really looks out for his people. So He does. Um, Okay, so let's go to let's go to that third lodge mm-hmm. and talk about that, and tell me a little bit about that, and then I want to circle back and just talk about the the reserve okay. as a whole. Yeah. So so uh, Cliff Lodge was was built. Oh goodness me, I've got to remember now. Probably about twelve years ago, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, and it was uh, one of Rich's little missions. We are staying at Rock Lodge. He always stays at Rock Lodge. He loves the view from the top there. Yeah. Um, since then, actually, he comes down to Safari Lodge. But we are up at Rock Lodge and we are looking around. He goes, you know what? I would like to have a separate home up here. Um, where do you think I could put it? I said, well, it's, it's very congealed. Long story short, we found a spot that he yeah. thought it was ideal and I had to make it happen. It took me almost almost 16 yeah. months to build, so it was a, okay. it was a mission. Uh, it was hard, but yeah. it, we've built this beautiful um, private villa uh, that can be taken out exclusively. Okay. You get your own butler, your own ranger, your own... Um, so you can uh, stay in Richard's... You like, can stay in his home. In his home. And it is spectacular. It's got a beautiful pool. It's got a, uh, It's got two two pools in there. It's got a little gym. It's got a spa. And I'm it's glad got, that you brought up the pool thing because I, I don't think people realize that you can can come here like in the heat of the summer and then in the day you can take a swim and absolutely. relax by the pool yeah, and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've got, you've got pools. At, at Some of the rooms we've got pools. Not all the rooms have pools. Yeah. We've got little plunge pools. Down here at Safari Lodge, it's quite entertaining. We've got some of the pools at some of the rooms uh, where actually elephants come down and drink out of the pool yeah. while you're in the pool. So it, we've had a few of those little examples yeah. with, with guests over the years. So it's, it's, it's exciting. And I'm pretty sure there was an animal fight outside my room last night. I, <laughs> probably. probably there. I, I believe there were baboons down there. And this morning yeah. when we drove out early, uh, while you were sleeping, <laughs> uh, but while we while we drove out this morning, we saw two lioness tracks coming down to the lodge. So we okay. we're assuming that lionesses came through here last night or early hours of this morning, and the barking that you heard was baboons. They sit in the trees and they just bark and shout at them because that's they, what I heard. Yeah, yeah letting I, everybody I was know. Up late. Yeah. Everybody was sending out the signal last night. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Okay, so let's talk about this whole reserve. What's this reserve called for people who are new to mm-hmm. um, South Africa? Yeah, so we are in the north eastern part of South Africa and we, we uh, this reserve is called the Sabi Sands Reserve. It's actually just changed its name. It used to be Sabi Sands Viltain, which okay. is an Afrikaans term for, for nature reserve. It's now called the Sabi okay. Sands Nature Reserve. Um, and we are part of a bigger reserve, which is the Kruger National Park. So there's no fences between us and them. 
game moves freely okay. around this area and it's massive. It's about three million hectares. So really this is uh, different than others because you don't have that electric fence we don't, going yeah. all around. We don't yeah. have, we, everything here moves freely in and out. So, so people want to come to Kruger, this would be a logical choice for people who want the upscale Absolutely, experience. absolutely. Yeah. And the immersive experience. Yeah. You, you've got a very good chance in, in a two to three nights stay of seeing everything you really want yeah. to see. You know, the game viewing here is spectacular. It really is. I've been here 23 years and this morning I was out there again. I've, I've done hundreds of thousands of drives. Yeah. I live for the bush. And this morning's drive, sadly that you did this. I know. This, but it, but it, <laughs> it's it, will forever it's, haunt me Yeah, now. but and it's that, regular though. I'm going to come back though. Yeah, now, exactly. I feel like I can't leave knowing yeah. what I missed because I decided to sleep in one day yeah. of the 10. <laughs> I think that's the special part that people don't realize. You know, once you do this sort of uh, adventure, it, it's contagious. So, so you, you can't wait to actually go yeah. back onto the next drive. And when you leave, you can't wait. You want to make plans to get back because, hell, I want to go and see a cheetah at full pace. Or, you know, yeah, I've so seen I'm a glad that you brought that up because we're talking to so many people in the yeah. travel advisor community that really the safari business is a repeat business. You can really um, economically grow your business with safari because people... I just saw you talking to another couple that's come time and time yes, again. Yep. I've been time and time again. Yep. So this is, this is a business that keeps on giving. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If you get it right. And yeah. I think it's, it's all about that soul. You know, if, if, you, if, you are, if you are caring and you, you show love and, you know, we practice a, a, an old African philosophy is called Ubuntu. And if, and if you, any of your followers want to want to look that up, it's an, an amazing African philosophy. And yeah. we, we run this lodge based mm -hmm. on Ubuntu. And it literally means I am because of you. And we do the same same with our guests. We are because of them. Yeah. And so we just try and create love this. That we, we love yeah. creating magic. And, and I've got many little magic makers around who, who create that, who just literally focus on how are we going to blow our guests away? How are we going right. to give them this experience? And the biggest prize for us is not gratuities, it's not monetary, it's the tears we see. It's the emotions we yeah. see. It's it's the people coming back to us. It's me crying. Uh, I get up this morning. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Those will be the real tears. Absolutely. Okay, let me, let me give you some hot questions that you're not prepared for. Sure. Okay, what what's the biggest like kill that you've seen or what you know what land animal <laughs> I've seen many yeah. like what I've would seen. you say really stands out as something that, like you're like that was just unbelievable yeah I've seen so on, many on to safari. be honest honestly I've seen leopard kills cheetah kills wild yeah. dog kills was there anything that just like uh, stood out in your mind besides this morning <laughs> yeah I mean this morning was lovely although yeah. I mean this morning was it, uh, it, although it was spectacular because of the cubbies yeah. but it, it's quite regular we see that quite regularly yeah. Yeah. the animals so what's got one a that you kill. just saw and you were just like whoa this this is my Blowing. I've seen uh, I've, what I have seen is, is, is cheetah on a full blown hunt. In fact, uh, Richard is one of the luckiest yeah. people in the world. So when he comes out here, I always drive him. I'm well, always even his the guy. animals like show respect. Literally, like, Richard's here. Literally, yeah. we know when he comes, we're going to see a good game. And uh, the one day we were driving and we we, we picked up on a cheetah. Um, he was Richard was sitting next to me and we were following this cheetah. And next thing, it just it gave full full pace. So it went at full pace, yeah. which is very very fast. Um, and it, it hunted down an impala. It, Managed to kill the impala. We got into the site and we were right in it, right amongst it all. And this obviously alarmed a pack of wild dogs. And yeah. the wild dogs, all of a sudden, we saw these dogs coming up and there was about 12 wild dogs yeah. that just rushed into the sighting. The cheetah ran, disappeared. They took over that kill and just tore it a pit. Because this is really, and it was just, I mean, your, your dog hairs, dog was, dog. yeah, <laughs> literally, but your hairs stand up because it's yeah. so primal and we are, we are sitting in it. So you, you know, the beauty of, 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 of these vehicles and, and these reserves is that the, the animals are habituated to the shape of that vehicle, not habituated to people. So it's very wild, but they look at that vehicle as, as another entity in the as bush. As a little part. And, yeah, and, I and notice they're so not at all concerned with it. So they're totally them. unconcerned. Yeah. So it gives us this wonderful ability to get quite close, not disrespectful, but get really yeah. close and just just really observe and take in what they are doing at that particular time. Yeah, those time. lions last night and then this morning were right next to Absolutely, the and they just got no problem with us. Yeah, no, no issue whatsoever. Absolutely. One thing that I've noticed is that your guides are so expert here. Yes. I've gone with a lot of different guides where they've only got a year or two, but I no. noticed no, you know, even last night on the drive that those guides, they just know. Yes. It's instinct and... 10, 15 years, yeah. it, it really makes a difference. No, it really complements the lodge. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, yeah. and it's something we do focus a lot on. You know, there's, there's one thing, as you know, in any industry, and certainly in ours, you can't teach passion. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, when I when I see somebody who's got that passion, has got that potential, sure. has got that experience, you know, is, is it's vital. You know, it's so important. So my guiding team, and when I say my guiding team, I mean my rangers and my trackers yeah. are the best in the industry. There's no two ways about it. Uh, they've been hand-selected. They've been here for a very long yeah. time. And, and 
and I've got a lot of people knocking on the door to try and get in here to be to be guides. So I'm very selective when it comes to that. Um, but I, I'm very proud of my team, and they they are very passionate, and they'll give everybody the most incredible experience. They're amazing. Okay, in terms of price point, because we're talking. Um, to the travel industry community mm -hmm. in the U.S. In terms of price point, who who is the demographic for this lodge here, the River Lodge? Well, it's 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 a, it's a good question because w the difference with us with both these lodges, and I'm going to include Rock, uh, we've got. We've got entry level rooms. So you're gonna get the same experience, but the rooms vary. Yeah. Most lodges will have one standard room and that's what you get. Yeah. Uh, high end luxury and that's what you get. Here you've got the ability, we, the, the, the demographic on that is, is quite broad. Right. So you're not only focused on the, the elite, it's also available to, yeah. to honeymooners, people who are, you know, maybe young youngsters or yeah. young people who are just wanting to travel together. Um, it's still affordable, yeah. you know, it's, it's very much affordable. You still get immersed in the same experience. You get the same, you know, you get the same magic from us. Um, so it's quite a broad uh, demographic compared to other lodges. You know, it's not so really, really you're recommending anybody looking to do a safari can really come out and look at your different price points and Absolutely. see if there's a fit for you. Because one of these three lodges are probably Absolutely. going to work. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Couldn't agree more. Um, talk to me about you've been in the business, you said, a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. What, what do you see that's changed so much from when you started? Yeah, good question. Very good question. I mean, uh, the, the big, the big talking point. And I know point, you're not set up for any of no, these. No, 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 it's all good. But the big, the big change, actually, uh, yeah. you know, uh, and, and obviously we've, we've had enough of all of us around the world hearing of this, but COVID was a big change for us. And it, it really gave us a handbrake, you know, it gave us time to really reflect on, on, yeah. on, on what we have achieved up until that point. And it almost has started us on a, not a clean slate, but it started us on a different slate. Yeah, we've and I think everybody feels like that, that they really had time to put their creative wills in motion Absolutely. And, and have a refresh. Absolutely. I, yeah. and, and, it's, and, and that's how we looked at it. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an eternal optimist. So I, we looked at it in that, in that aspect. Yeah. We didn't take the time during that period of time to work on our buildings and things like that. We refocused it on our staff and we looked after our staff. Nice. And hence, we've got this spirit. We've got this wonderful spirit. So, so you know, I, I, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's just an amazing reserve. You've got to come. You've got to come and experience <laughs> this magic. Uh, come and experience my staff and just come have a, a, an amazing time. I didn't want to touch a little bit mm -hmm. that really makes us quite unique as well. And, and something I'm very, very proud of is a, um, uh, is pride and purpose. It's, a, it's our community footprint. It's, yeah. We do a lot of work in the communities and, and a lot. Uh, we work with disabled centers. And so if we, somebody's actually coming to the lodge, are they able to participate in some absolutely. of those We've community got programs? Because I know sustainability and, you know, giving back is... Yes. Is on everybody's absolutely list for traveling. Absolutely, right now. And, yeah. and and has always been high on Richard's list. So mm -hmm. so he's always been about that. And and uh, so we do a lot of focus in those communities, mostly with children. Um, we've got a very special place for children, and we do a lot of work in in our communities for that. We've built over thirty schools um, in the twenty years. Yeah. We've uh, we've got a few clinics that we've built. We've got disabled centres. We've got a variety of things. Sure. We, we we're trying to start up little businesses. For example, just a quick fun one is that we take we we obviously got lovely sheets on all our beds it's egyptian cotton so really quality stuff yeah and, then and i'm telling you what i'm all about the bedding yeah. so everywhere i go if the bedding's not good no, it's got to be top class <laughs> yeah. i'm the same so so we got the egyptian cotton and we only keep them for a year possibly yeah. a year and a half and then we get rid of them so you don't want to throw that away we give that to the community who start then to make us our day gowns for and so we've taught them how to make Gowns, so you're repurposing and everything. We're repurposing that you're using. and then they're creating a little business. And nice. then and then we pay them for that. They make slippers and they do a variety of things for yeah. us as well. So it's being about to engage with the community. So you because, can be with the animals, you can be engaged during the day, absolutely. you can be doing a spa treatment absolutely. after your yeah, you can, of giving back. Exactly, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And our spa ladies are, yeah, they've got the magic hand. So uh, hugely um, advisable to go on one of those. When you're going all yeah. over the bumps every day, you know, to, to, get, to get a little massage sure. afterwards is wonderful. Okay, finally, what do you think the future looks like? I mean, I, I know you're going to say, yeah, yeah. You're gonna say bright, but yeah. what, what about with the impending recession coming up? Do you see yeah, that's, tough, that's eh? going to be an issue? Absolutely. I mean, you guys yeah. aren't the, the cheapest on the totem pole out no, here. And no, it's tough. Look, it's, it's, uh, it's it's, it's tough, but it's great because it, it makes sure that you are, your, your pencils are always sharpened. You know, it makes sure like that, that you're yeah. on, on, on the button. Mm -hmm. I think a recession, it's going to affect all of us. There's no two ways yeah. about it. Um, have, you felt, uh, have you felt a slowdown? Not really. I, I think we're still feeling this, excuse this me, yeah. COVID hangover. It's kind of getting through this COVID period of time. We are riding on a wonderful wave at the moment, but we're not resting on those laurels. I don't know how long it is going to yeah. last. It's, it's such, you know, we, we can see how quickly things can shut down. Just by the pandemic. It, it gives, gives you an idea of how that would work. Yeah. I strongly believe 
that this sort of immersive experience will survive because it is it is it is an immersive experience. It is a it is a it is a feeling. It is not a, it's not just a you know you're not just going to Paris to go and look at the Eiffel Tower. This is an immersive experience yeah. where you're really starting to your your hairs tingle. You know you yeah. can smell, taste, hear, and and see just the yeah. wonderful wilderness that we live in. And I think people are going back that way. You know they're wanting to reconnect. Sure. And uh, we are there to help them reconnect. It's a very and how important. far are you seeing that people are actually booking out for? next year. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it used to be long lead times. You know, we used yeah, to have long, super long lead times. sometimes about a year. Short lead times. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden it was like, I want to go in six weeks exactly. after COVID. So that's what's so been happening. So where are we at now? That's kind of where it is at the moment. Still, I mean, we still, yeah. got a, we still got a few people. Okay. As, as, as you mentioned earlier, we've got a lot of repeat guests who kind of book their yeah. stays and they know which time of the year they want to be here. So they kind of already booked forward for a couple okay. of years but our general people who are coming here for the first time it's a much shorter lead time so you're looking at probably anything between a month and three months sometimes um, possibly a little longer than that but it's definitely getting shorter and obviously people are shopping around as well you know um, there's lots of competition there's a lot of competition yeah. which is great I, I, I think it's fantastic I think there's enough to go around but at the same time, it makes sure that we are on top of our game and we, we're passionate about what we do and we yeah. want to create this magic. It's lovely having a bit of competition. I, I, I thrive in that environment. Competition's good. Yeah. Let's talk about East versus South for a minute because I know that you've spent a lot of time um, in the East. Mm -hmm. um, Tanzania, East, yeah. Kenya. Um, what, what do you feel like the difference is for you? Like what, what attracts you more to the South than... Yeah, I mean, that. I, because I, that, that's tight competition in itself. People it always is. want to know, like, where am I going to see the most animals? Where am I going to have the best yeah. sightings? Where's the best tents to stay in? Yeah, There's absolutely. lots of luxury brands out there now. There is, absolutely. And I mean, East Africa is special. You can't take that away from them. They've got the great migration yeah. happening there. It is special. It's, it's, a, it's a place that... Uh, I, don't you feel like every place is different here? Like, every yeah. country is different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think South Africa, what South Africa has got is that you can come to and have a bush experience, have an amazing experience, yeah. and you can get down to Cape Town and have a completely to Completely a totally different, different experience, and it's a very cosmopolitan, very vibey. And you can do that all with the Virgin brand Absolutely. across the board. We've got, yeah. we got a wine farm down down mm -hmm. in the Cape as well. Um, there's some beautiful places in, in Southern Africa and easy to get around to. So East Africa is very much targeted. So if you're going to go to East yeah. Africa, you're going for a safari. There are beach options there as well, but yeah. it's pretty much that. Here, if you come to South Africa, you've got the options of getting around a lot easier. Yeah. Um, the game viewing in the Sabi Sands is second to none. Uh, I know the game viewing up in East Africa. I've been, I've traveled, I've done a lot of it. It's magnitude, it's phenomenal, but just nothing compares to an immersive experience like in the Sobi Sands. Maybe because I'm South African and I'm very no proud bias. South African. <laughs> no bias. Um, but yeah, I, 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 East Africa is just as special. Okay. Just as special. Final wrap up. Yeah. Anything that you want to tell us that we haven't talked about? <laughs> no, other than, other than, Come, come visit us. You know, I'd, I'd love to welcome you put into our family. Just know that when you do come here, we'll keep a little slither of your heart so that you're going to return and come back and collect that little piece of heart. But uh, yeah, that's, that's all I really got to say. And I, I, I hope you have a, hope you get on to drive this afternoon and tomorrow morning. Yeah, Don't no, miss I'm, a drive I'm ready right after this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, you've got a piece of my heart of definitely coming back. Excellent. So, and we appreciate the invite. Absolutely. Thanks Absolutely. for having us. And Cheers. I'm Angela Hughes, Insider Travel Report.